Vatican has strongly denounced fresh allegations that the Pope ignored warnings about child abuse as a smear. The latest claims against the Pope come from the US. Two bishops there say they wrote to a Vatican office led by the then Cardinal Ratzinger about a priest accused of abusing deaf children. Well, the head of the Catholic Church in England and Wales defended the Pope's handling of the child abuse scandals. Writing in the Times, he says he led important changes made in church law. He's not an idle observer. His actions speak as well as his words. Vincent Nichols also says the Catholic Church here has worked hard to tackle abuse. It is clear and total disclosure. It's to make plain that in the Catholic Church in England and Wales, there's no hiding place for those who seek to harm children. Well, tourists at the Vatican today have been giving their reaction. He should answer the questions. It's simple. We would all have to answer those questions, so he is not above the law. He should answer the questions. What's your... I mean, it's rather difficult because he says that he didn't know about it. So uh, uh, what, can, what can you do? I mean, he's the Pope. What can you do? But it has to, of course, it has to be uh, investigated uh, because it's really terrible, a terrible thing. Well, a correspondent for the Catholic publication The Tablet told Sky News the Pope needs to show there was no cover-up. This is the fear that, you know, I think all Catholics have, uh, and certainly the leaders of the Catholic Church, the Pope in particular. I mean, he's sitting over, uh, presiding over one of the potentially biggest crises in, in the modern history of the papacy, certainly. Uh, and, you know, the question is, what did he know and when did he know it? Up till now, he has tried to show that he personally and the Vatican as an institution are not implicated, uh, ha have not played any role in covering up or directing any kind of cover up. Well, we could speak now to Jack Valero, the UK spokesman for the Catholic group Opus Dei, who joins us from Central London. Very good afternoon to you. Let me start with a question put in that final piece there. What did the Pope know and when did he do it? When did he know it? Well, what we have here is a story of a priest who abused children in the 70s and then was denounced to the civil authorities who carried out their own investigation, which they somehow dropped. We don't know why. And uh, so there was no cover up there. Later on, 20 years later, a letter was written to the Vatican from the Archbishop saying that some of those crimes were against the confessional because solicitation of sex in the confessional is a very grave crime for, for a Catholic priest. And so this was then sent to the Pope, to, to, not to the Pope, to the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, which was run then by the Cardinal Ratzinger. And a uh, process started in 96, 20 years after the event whereby this priest would be investigated and, and possibly defrocked. Two years later, while this process was going on, this priest wrote to Cardinal Ratzinger to say, look, I'm, I've been living in isolation, I've been doing penance, I'm very old, I'm about to die, this process is not going nowhere. And, and, the, and then Cardinal Ratzinger agreed to stop it. And this priest died four months later. Well, this may have been the right decision or the wrong decision, you could say, but there's certainly no cover-up and no complicit in the, in the actions of the priest. But there are those who would argue that Cardinal, Cardinal Ratzinger, it was his responsibility to denounce this man and to defrock him, which is what the victims wanted, because he admitted abuse, but he claimed he wanted compassion because he was dying. Yes, but he had already been denounced to the civil authorities 20 years before, and they had investigated. But no action and it was, was ever taken against him. It was the responsibility of the local bishop, and maybe he was incompetent. So you're, saying, so, you're saying Cardinal Ratzinger, as he was then, the Pope, had no responsibility to make sure that this man was punished and defrocked? There was a process going on which started in 96, and in 98, four months before he died, this man wrote on com and asked comp compassionate grounds that this wouldn't go ahead, and this was agreed at the last minute. OK, you said this decision, right or wrong as it may be. Was it right or was it wrong? Well. Maybe nowadays it, wouldn't, it would have been taken differently, but at the time, you know, that's what they we're thought. We're only talking nine years no ago, up. though. The, we're only talking nine years that, ago. There is, the point is there's no cover-up. The church is very much against this kind of thing. And in fact, in 2001, the, the, the CDF, the, Co the Co Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, asked that all cases should be sent to them from all the dioceses so that they could be speeded up, so that people who, who, who did sexual abuse of children could be defrocked immediately without all the delays that took place in diocese. Like this one, you see, it took 20 years for them to write to the Vatican. I mean, why is that? This is incompetence on, on the part of the diocese.
Yeah, but you're blaming the diocese. You're, you're all one church, and people look to the Pope, to the Vatican for leadership and to take leadership on this issue, which they didn't do for decades. Ah, well, that's the procedures that were, were around at the time. I know, but, in, but in do you understand that blaming procedures is just blaming the rules? You guys make up the rules. Right. So, uh, yes, the, the procedures were then that the things were dealt with at diocesan level. So they were wrong, and, the procedures were, were wrong. And the procedures were not good enough, obviously, because they've been redrawn all over the world. Like you were saying that the Archbishop of Westminster has, has, has spoken today in the Times, so the procedures of the church, the Catholic Church in England and Wales, which are very good at the moment, but of course they've been changed in the, you know, 10 years ago because they were not good enough before. The Vatican has attacked the media today, blaming a conspiracy theory uh, and denouncing these claims in the papers today and the questions that I'm putting to you. Is that completely the wrong direction for them to take? No, I think that there is a, there's a witch hunt, isn't there, to, to, to try to implicate the Pope. But in this particular case and others that have been reported recently, he's not actually implicated. Of course there have been problems in the Catholic Church. But this sexual abuse crisis is huge. It's not just the Catholic Church, as Angela Merkel has said in Germany. It, it, it involves the whole of society. There's a huge problem which is almost taboo to talk about. The whole of, you know, most of the sexual abuse happens in the family by people who are not priests or religious, who abuse. Uh, the children or stepchildren, sometimes with the complicit, you know, with the, the, the other, the partner being complicit in the act and covering up and so on. Th this is a huge problem in society. And the church, which is cleaning up its act, because, you know, some, some people did that also in the church, is leading this crusade to get rid of this. Okay, Jack Valero, thanks very much for your time today. Let's catch up on all the business data this afternoon. Now, here's John.